Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to create optical mark recognition algorithm in Python using OpenCV. We will write the code from scratch going step by step while discussing the details of each line. We will use the webcam to automatically find the grades of different MCQs. I upload videos on a weekly basis so don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell and if you find the video useful give it a thumbs up and share it along. So let's get started. So let's look at the pipeline first. First we are going to take our original image and then convert it into grayscale. Then we will find the edges in this grayscale image. Next we are going to find all the contours present in this image. And then from this we will find the biggest rectangles and their corner points. Then we will take the bird's eye view which is the word perspective. Later we will apply some threshold and we will find the marks where each of the marks are present. Lastly, we will save our final answer with the score. So here we have a blank project and we have the script of OMR main and we have three images that we are going to use to detect our correct answers. So the first thing we will need is to import our packages. So we will go to file settings and we will go to our project. And over here, we are going to add our packages. So the first one we will need is OpenCV. So we will write OpenCV and we will click on it and click install. The next one we will need is NumPy and we will install that as well. So the one I am using is the latest one, 1.18.1. 1 .1. And for OpenCV, let me check it again. It is 4.2.0.32. So both of them are latest ones so far. So both of them have been installed and we can verify by writing import CV2 and then import NumPy as NP. So the first thing we will do is we will import our image using the imread function and we will display it in a window. So we will say that image is equals to cv2.imread and we will define a path. So it is right in our directory so we do not need to define a folder. Or we can write a path here. We can say path is equals to 1.jpg and we can write our path in here. And then we will display it, we will say uh, cv2.imshow and then we will name the window original and then we will say that we want to display the image. And at the end we have to write cv2.wait key and we will put it as zero. So let's right click it and run. And there you go. There you go. So we have our image and um, it is quite big. So we are going to rescale it. So the first thing we will do after importing is to resize our image. So we will say that our image is equals to cv2.resize and we will resize our original image and then we will give it a width and a height. So width um, of our image and then height of our image and then we will close the brackets which are already closed so we will go up here and we can define our parameters all these parameters here so let's write that so here uh, the second one will be width image is equals to let's say 700 and height image let's say also 700 so if we run that and there you go it's a little squeezed but 
should work not a big deal okay so next we are going to process our image uh, we call this pre-processing we will convert it into grayscale we will add a little bit of blur and then we will uh, detect our edges so that we can find our rectangles in which we have uh, all the markings so let's start by converting it to grayscale first so image gray is equals to cv2 dot cvt color our source image is image and then we have to say cv2 dot color so we will say bgr2 gray uh, then we can add a little bit of blur so we will say image blur is equals to cv2 dot Hossian blur and our source is the image gray and we have to uh, define the size of the kernel and uh, we will say that it is 5 by 5 and then we have to define the sigma x which we will say as 1. Now we will uh, we will detect our um, edges using the image canny function so we will say that our image canny Canny is equals to cv2 dot canny I think the C is capital yes C is capital and then we will define we will write our image blur here then we have to define our threshold values so we can start with uh, some small values for example 10 and 50 and then we can change it later on if required now we have created a lot of these images and uh, we haven't actually uh, seen them so it is a good idea to visualize them before we go further so in order to do that uh, we will use um, one of the functions that I've previously created in uh, one of the previous videos where we can stack a lot of images together to see the pipeline of the project how the project um, how the images are changing as we go along so let me import that uh, function but what we are going to do in this project we are going to keep all the main functions um, all the main functionality in our main script which is omr main but we will add a module in which we will put all our uh, supporting functions and we will call that utilities so let me create that new python file utilis and that's it so here we are also going to import um, cv2 and import numpy as np. So here we will put all our functions that we will be using during the process. So let me import that function. So it is called stack images. So this is the function. So basically uh, if you give it an array of images, it will put them together and um, you can also define a scale and uh, if you want to define you can define some labels as well <coughs> <coughs> so in order to use this function we have to write here import and because this is in the main directory we do not have to define from where so we can simply write utilis so here, um, instead of the IM show that we are using originally, what we are going to do is we are going to use our stacking function to create some uh, array, uh, array of images and then we will display them using the function. So here we can write uh, image array, image array is equals to, we are going to create an array uh, so let's write that down so first we will write our image and then we will display image image gray then image blur and then we can display should we display in the new line or oh, let's let's display it here image canny so we can create another one later on so image canny and so this is our array and now what we have to do is we have to stack them using the function so we will say stacked 
or we should write image tag. Image tagged is equals to uh, our function uh, is in the utilities module. So we will say utilities and dot stack images. And here we are going to define our array, which is image array. And then we have, is it not the same spelling? Oh, okay, image array. Okay, so then we have to define the scale, which we will say 0 0.5. And then we have the labels, but we are not going to change the labels for now. So then we can just take this and put it here instead. And we can say here that these are the stacked images. So let's run that. And there you go. So we have our original image. Then we have the gray image, a little bit of blur added. And then we have the canny edge detector. So as you can see, in the edge detector, we are able to detect our uh, rectangles that we need for the markings. And we also have the rectangle of the grading that we will add our grade in. And we also can see that we are getting uh, quite a bit of difference between um, the marked, uh, uh, what do you call, the MCQs or, and the ones that are not marked. So that is a good sign. So all of this, we can put it uh, separate. So here we have our, let's call this pre-processing and let's make it capital okay so next next what we are going to do next we are going to find our contours and uh, to find the contours we are going to use the find contour function so let's write that down so we are going to say our contours and our hierarchy what are the spellings a R C H Y, and then we are going to say cv2 dot find contours we will define our image canny and then we are going to define the method cv2 dot we, we are we are going to use the external method uh, this will help us find the outer edges and uh, then we are going to say that we do not need any approximation. So cv2 dot chain approximation, cv2 dot chain approximation as none. Okay, so this will give us all the contours. And uh, what we need to do now is we can display them so that we know what kind of contours we are getting. So to draw them, we have the function draw contours. So cv2 dot draw contours and uh, we have to give it the image so we will say that we want to draw it in a new image so let's go up here and let's create a new image right after we resize it so image contours contours is equals to image dot copy so now we can use this image contours here and then we have to define which contours we want to display and then we have to define the index so we need all of them so we'll write minus one and then we have to define the color so let's put them green and then we will define the thickness should we define or not let's let's define it so we'll put it as 10 so it's nice and clear so now we need to add to our image array so that we can see uh, our image and um, let's create a new one also we will create a blank image uh, just for temporary purposes so that we can compensate for the remaining images what i mean by that is we are creating a new row and over here we are going to write uh, image contours but we need three more images but we don't have anything else so we can just create a blank image so we can say image 
blank is equals to we can copy it from somewhere so we can say np dot zeros like um, the real image which is image okay so over here we can put image blank a couple of times and that should do it so let's run that and there you go so now we have the blank images and we have the image with all our contours so we can see that we are very well able to detect all the co uh, the contours the rectangles that we are interested in so we need the most um, the most useful one for us is the one that has all the markings in them and the one that we are going to put the grade in so both of them are detected well so we are good to go without changing any parameters we can move on further so the next step would be to find which of these are uh, actually rectangles so in order to do that we will create a new function and we will call it uh, for example a rectangle contour but we will write it in our utilities because we will be calling this function and it will have quite a bit of code so we will put it in uh, our module instead so first we will define our function name which is rectangle contours or contour let's say and then we will um, request for the argument of contours okay and uh, okay so what we need to do is uh, first of all we need to filter it out using area we don't want any small rectangles and then we need to filter out um, if it has four corner points or not so if it's if it has four corner points we will declare it as a rectangle and then we will uh, use that to find the biggest one and the second biggest one and so on so in order to do that we are going to loop through all the contours and find their area to first filter out the area so we will write for for i in contours we are going to write area is equals to cv2 dot contour area contour area and then we will just define our contour so this will give us the area of our given contour so if you want to see how that looks like we can print it out and we can say area so it will print all the areas of each contour and um, what we need to do is we need to call this function so we will go back and after drawing it uh, actually we should comment this so we will write here we, what are we doing we are fi finding all con contours yes and now we are going to find find rectangles so to find the rectangles we are going to write our uh, we are going to call our function utility and uh, since we do not have what happened okay spellings okay contours so if we run this now it should give us yes it's giving us the area of each contour so you can see some of them are very small so we want to neglect them um, early on so we will say that uh, what we need is a minimum area of let's say 50 or 100 it depends on the situation but to be on the safe side we'll keep it as 50 so if area is greater than 50 then only we are going to apply our functions so first of all we are going to find the total length of this contour so we will say that our parameter is equals to um, cv2 dot arc length and then we are going to say that we want to find it for our given contour and we are expecting it to be a closed one so we will write it as true 
once we have that we are going to approximate how many uh, what type of polygon it is so how many corner points it has so we will write approximation of uh, the polygon we will write cv2 dot approx poly and using that we will try to find uh, the poly the poly count or the corner count of our given contour uh, with a resolution so we have to give it a resolution this value you can change and you can uh, play around with so it is based on our uh, total length which is our parameter and then we are also expecting it again to be closed loop so we will say it is true now this will give us an approximation of uh, how many um, corner points each one of these have so let's print it out and see what that looks like so we can write here print actually let me put that back so if you guys want to check it again you can check it here so we can write here area is this and i will comment it out if anyone wants to check it up till this point so for this one we are going to check the corner points so we are going to write, let's start from here. We are going to write corner points and then we will write approx. So if we run that again, and there you go. So for each one of them, it is giving us these points. But you can see these are the actual points. We are not getting how many points we have. To get how many we have, we have to just check the length of this list. So if we write the length, uh, don't ask that again, and let's go. So you can see we have 10 points, 8 points, 12 points, 9 points, and so on. So each of these that have 4 is basically our rectangle, and that is what we are interested in. So we will say that, uh, let's comment this out, and down below we are going to write, if the length of our approximation is equals to 4 then we are going to um, put all of these in a list so um, let's create a new list by uh, at the top so we will say rectangle contours is equals to empty and here we are going to append our list each time we are getting a rectangle so rectangle contour dot append and we are going to append the contour itself so once that is done uh, we can print out uh, once the loop is done we can print out our what is that Re rectangle contours so that should be a list of all the what do you call yes so there you go that is a list uh, of con uh, containing all the corner points of each of the rectangles so now we have a list of all the rectangle um, contours but what we want to do is we want to arrange them uh, based on their area so that we can say that whichever one is the greatest uh, that should be number one and then uh, the, the second uh, biggest is number two and so on. So that way it's very easy for us to just grab the first uh, element or the second element of the whole list. So what we can do is we can rearrange it. We can say rectangle uh, contours is equals to, we will use the sorted uh, function, sorted, and we want to sort our rectangle corner points contour points and we have to define based on what are we um, what do you call um, sorting it out so that is known as a key so key is equals to we are going to use cv2 dot uh, contour area contour area and at the end we we don't want to start it ascending we want it descending so the first one should be the biggest one and then the second biggest and the third biggest so usually it gives ascending so it will start from the smallest then the the second then the third then the fourth so we want the biggest first so we will write reverse as true so this will give us 
in order uh, of the rectangles based on their area or the size. So once we are done with that, we just need to return return our contours. So now we have all the contours and we can say that the first one will be the biggest, the second one is the second biggest. So now we can just call this function and we can uh, find the biggest contour. So we will save this uh, list in again rectangle contours is equals to utilities and it will find it and send it back. So now we can find the biggest contour uh, for our image. So we can write biggest uh, biggest contour is equals to uh, the first one that we have. So if we take the biggest one and we can just print it out so you can see there is our biggest ones but the thing is that we are getting lots of points it's not just four points we are getting uh let's let's just see the length of it so you know how many points are we getting there you go so we are getting 1301 points uh, which is a lot so what we need are four points the corner points of our biggest uh, rectangle so what we can do is we can use these contour points and we can try to find corner points and we have some functions for that but again we are not going to write it here uh, we can write it in our utilities so we can define that we want to find define our gets corner points and the funny thing is that we have already used that function before so we are going to write here our contour and here we are going to copy this code so basically this is what is giving us the four corner points if you remember our length was four and that is why we are getting this now it is it is a bit redundant i can see that but this is an easy way to do it without getting it uh, without making it too complicated so we are going to copy this and uh, instead of i we are going to replace our contour and this will approximate it uh, with the four points and it will return us the approximation so this way we can simply uh, use our function here utilis dot uh, get corner points and we want to get the corner points of our rectangle and if we run that but before we run that we are going to print again our biggest contour this time and there you go so now we are getting exactly four points that are our corner points of our biggest rectangle so if we want the second biggest we can simply write one here and that should give us the second biggest uh, contour now let's just have a look at this so the biggest one is this which has all the markings and then the second biggest should be our grading so let's call that grading points so we can say that grade points is equals to utility and this will be at number one so now we have the biggest and the second biggest contour so next we need to see that whether they have been detected or not if they are if they have been detected then we can uh, apply all those functions um, to get our markings and find the grade and whatever so let's first test if we are getting it so we will say that if biggest contour dot size is not equals to zero and grade points dot size is also not equals to zero then only we will perform the coming functions so 
once we have our uh, point, what we can do is we can um, we can actually draw them to see what is going on. So which one are we actually getting? So let's draw them. So we can say cv2 dot draw contours. We are going to um, let's create a new image again. So we can say here. Um, image biggest contour biggest contours so we are getting two so we are writing contours so here we are going to draw our uh, biggest contours on our image so image biggest contours and then we are going to reuse the biggest points and then we are going to define um, minus one then we have the color so let's put this one as green and then let's define the thickness again as 10 and then we are going to do the same thing but this time we will do it for the second biggest and we will write grade points and then we are going to change the color so that we know that we are on the correct path so 255 and we forgot to display our new image so here we will write that and there you go so here we can see them okay let me make it bigger so let's put it as 20 and 20 so there you go so we are able to detect our biggest contour as the correct one and then the second biggest as well is correct in our given situation so both of them i have different colors so it's easier to see now once we have these points what we need to do is we need to warp them so we need to warp the image so we get the bird's eye view and then we can apply our functions on it to get uh, the markings and create them later on so the first thing we will do is we will reorder our points. Now, if we don't reorder our points, um, we do not know which point refers to origin, which is the last one, which is the second one. So we need to find a way to reorder them so that they are always in the exact same order before we send it to warping. Because if we are warping in the wrong order, the image will not come out properly. So let's um let's create a new function to reorder our points so let's go here and here we are going to define a new function by the name reorder now we need uh, the points so we will say my points and then um, let me just write here pass for now and let's go back and see what kind of points do we have so these are the points that we are going to send so we need to see what kind of points we have so we will write print and we will write biggest contour dot shape so it is four by one by two so we understand that we have four rows we understand that for each row we have two uh, two values the x and the y but this one is redundant so we don't need that so we will reshape it to four by two so the first thing we will do is we will say that my points is equals to my points dot reshape and we are going to reshape it as four by two now what we are doing is we are simply going to add and subtract uh, to find our uh, origin point the final the diagonal point and the the other two corner points so that we can rearrange them so the first thing we are going to do is that we will sum all of these uh, what do you call points 
so we are going to say add is equals to my points and then dot sum and then we have to define which axis do we need to sum in so we will use axis number one so if I print this you will understand what I mean so print add um, let me print the points as well so it's easier for you to see so print my points and then it will print the add so let's run that let me remove the shape from here it did not print anything because we did not call the function so we need to call this uh, let's say here so it is in utilis.reorder and we need to reorder our biggest contour and there you go so basically what it's, it's doing is it's adding two three four by one one zero that gives you three four four then it's adding one seven four by three six nine which gives you five four three and then so on it keeps adding <coughs> Now, one thing we can tell uh, by simply adding is which of these is the starting or the corner point or the origin point. The origin point will have the smallest sum, which means it will be 0, 0. So in our case, 3, 4, 4 is the origin. So the, the sm whichever one is the smallest one from here, we will put that as the first element of our contour or the corner so now th th these are the old points to put them in uh, a new array we are going to declare that new array now if you remember our original array has the shape of 4 by 1 by 2 so we are going to create the same so my points new is equals to numpy dot zeros and we will define the shape of it so we will say it is 4 by 1 by 2 and uh, then we can define what type are we using so we can say we are using integers so in this now we can store our values so here let me remove this and remove this here we are going to say that our my points new at number zero which is our first element should be my points from the old ones and we need to find the index of this array right so we need to find the index so if the smallest one is zero so we will take this here and put it in the new one here so we need to find that index so to find that index we are going to say that numpy dot arg minimum and we will say that we need to find the minimum index of this array so in that case it will be zero so here we will write add now note that it will not always be zero for another image it might be different uh, actually let's let's run with another image so that you get a clearer picture so let me go here and put it as 2 there you go this is the second image and again it's the smallest one again so it might be it might not be so maybe the third one let me try maybe the third one is a little bit different no it's the same okay um, there, there can be some instances where it's not the first one and uh, so we, we don't have it here right now but anywho we are going to continue so this will be our first element uh, which is our origin zero zero and then our second one should be our final our final point which is our maximum width and height so that should be the sum that has the maximum value so in this case we are going to say that our last point should always be the maximum value so here our last point which is number three should be the maximum of our 
addition uh, list. So this is for the first two. And now for the other two, we will find the difference between them. And using difference, we are going to define which one comes first. So we will write difference is equals to numpy dot diff. And then my points. And we are going to define the axis again, like we added them before. This time around, we are subtracting. So that's the difference. So we can say the axis is one again. So next, we are going to define our points. My points new at number one will be my points and it will be the numpy arguments minimum of the difference so this is basically our zero and width so this is what we are referring to now the next one will be the next one uh, sorry it's not the width it's zero it's width and zero and the next one will be number two and it will be the maximum and it will be height and zero so this one is This one is maximum, which is your width and height. Okay, so let me let me just show you what it looks like. The array or the list of differentiation. And there you go. So this is our list of uh, the, the differences. So here we have the differences and you can see the the lowest one is minus four 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 and then uh, the biggest value is one nine five so both of these we have not used before so we did not use this one and this one so here we are using this and this uh, in the corresponding um in the corresponding list so next we are just going to return this so we will say return my points new and we can just print we can comment all of these out so we don't get these as the output so here we are going to reorder our biggest contour and we are also going to reorder our second biggest contour and uh, so let's do that. So we will say that our uh, biggest contour is equals to once it's reordered, we get that. Now, once we have uh, done the reordering, we can do it for the second biggest as well. So we can say grade points and here as well, we can say grade points. Now, next, we are going to apply the word perspective so that we get the bird's eye view. Now, in order to do that, we need to define our points first, and then we will create a transformation matrix, and then we will apply the word perspective. So we need to define the points first. So we will say points one is equals to. So th these are the points that uh, we have already uh, got from the, uh, what do you call, the contours. So we will write just numpy dot float of 32. And uh, we are going to define our biggest contour. Then for points number two, point two is equals to numpy dot uh, float 32. 
and here we are going to define our sequence that we reordered them over here so the first one is zero zero the second one is width zero the third one is height zero and the fourth one is width and height so we have to define that order here so to do that we are going to write the first one is zero zero then we are going to write the second one is width and the zero which will be width of our image that we defined earlier and then it will be height and zero oh sorry zero and height I think I did the same mistake at the back it should be zero and height So this will be zero and height and then the last one will be width and height. So these are our points and once we have that we can get our matrix. Now to get the matrix we will write matrix is equals to cv2 dot get perspective transform. So we will uh, say that we need it for the points one and points two. So this will give us our transformation metrics and then we can use uh, this to apply the uh, word perspective. So we will say, now we will get the actual image. So we will say that image, uh, let's say warp uh, colored is equals to cv2 dot warp perspective and our source is our image and then we are using our matrix and then we need to define the width and height so we will keep it as the original width and the original height now this will give us the verbed image the bird view so let's see how that looks like and let's rerun that and there you go so now we are getting the bird eye view of our uh, green points, which is the biggest one. And the second one, we need to get it for our, uh, the small portion, which is of the grade. So the process will be the same. We will have to copy this and we will paste here. Instead of biggest, we will have grade points and, um, for the width and height, we do not need the original width and height. So we can write any value here, for example, 325. Let's say the height is 150. Yeah. So we can write here 150 and then 325 and 150. So this we cannot put in our, uh, what do you call, image array. So we can just, uh, but before we do that, we need to change the names here. So we can write here, for example, for the grade. So G1, G2, and we can add here matrix G. Oh, what happened? Matrix G. And uh, for here, we can name it image grade grade display and uh, we don't need to change anything here here we need to change yes so g1 and g2 so just to see if we are getting it right we can just uh, create another i am show so we can say this is the grade Part and we will say image grade display okay it's giving us this which is not right so it means we have done some mistake at the back okay we need to use the matrix G not the matrix so let's run that and we still have an issue okay so oh 
Oh yeah, the width and the height. So the width will be 3 to 5 and the height will be 150. So there you go. So this is what we are getting of our grade. And uh, so later on we are going to put uh, some value here based on the grade we are receiving. And then we will display it back on our original image. So for now what we need to do next is we need to um, find these markings. So wherever we have the answers and then we will check whether these answers are correct or not. And based on that we will give it a grade. So the first thing we will do is we will, are we displaying anything? Yeah, let's let's remove this. Okay, so now we are going to uh, apply some threshold so that we can find um, the marking points. So the, the bubbles that do not have any markings will have less amount of uh, pixels, non-zero pixels, but the values, uh, the, the bubbles where there, we have some markings, they will have more amount of pixels. So based on that, we can def we can find which pixels are which bubbles are marked and which are not. So we are going to apply threshold, and uh, uh, to apply the threshold, we have to first convert it into gray. So we will say that image uh, warp gray is equals to cv2 dot cvt color and we will use our image warped color and we are going to say that cv2 dot uh, color bgr2 gray once we have it in gray we are going to apply our threshold so image let's say thresh is equals to cv2 dot threshold and we are going to apply it to our image warp gray and then we have to define some parameters um, let's put some random parameters at thresholds this is the maximum value we'll keep it as 255 and then we will write our cv2 dot the type so we will write threshold binary but we want to inverse and then we can simply display this out. So instead of the blank, we can run this. And there you go. So now we are getting uh, a nice uh, image of our, uh, what do you call, image warped. And we have converted into threshold uh, binary values. So we can easily detect so here for example we will have a lot more pixels white pixels than we have here or here or here so in any of these we can easily detect here we are not getting that much even though we have some good amount of uh, pencil there but let's, let's change the value a little bit let's make it a little bit higher there you go it's a little bit better so next we are going to get each of these individual bubbles and see how many pixel values uh, are non-zero to find out which one of them are marked and which one of them are not marked. So to find each of these individual bubbles, we need to split our image, the one we just got into uh, 25 different uh, boxes. So if we look at this, we need to split it into 25 different regions. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So in order to do that, we have a very simple function that is available in NumPy package. Now, as you know that images are just matrices, so NumPy is good with handling matrices. So we can use NumPy functions to split our uh, image. So what we need to do is we will go to our utilities and we will create a new function by the name split. Uh, let's say split boxes. And we will feed it an image. Now once we have that image we are going to first uh, split it um, horizontally to get all the rows. And then we will split it vertically to get uh, every individual bubble. 
so let's get the rows first so rows is equals to numpy dot vertical splits now we are going to send it an image and uh, we have to define um, how many uh, cuts or how many splits we want to make so we will say five so let's see how that looks like cb2 dot i am show and we can say split and we can put rows and in the rows we have to get the first one where did it go did i get it no because we did not call it okay so let's go back and paste this here and this is in the utilities and we are going to feed it image threshold image threshold so let's run that and there you go so we are getting now this is our uh, first split so we are getting uh, the first row and now what we need to do is we need to split it again vertically so that we can get each individual uh, bubble so let's split it again we'll go back to our function and here we are going to say that for so for r in rows so for each one of them we are going to say that our column is equals to numpy dot horizontal split and then we are going to define our image and then how many times we want to section it so we need to do it five times so now this will give us our um, split again so what we need to do is we need to put each one of these uh, into what do you call um, an, a new list or a new array so what we can do is we can create here boxes is equals to empty list and then we can say for box in columns for each one of them we want to append boxes dot append and we will append the box so it means it will append each image now if you want to see each one of them we can simply print them out so you understand what is happening so before we uh, after we append we can just display it over here and this should give us a lot of images or maybe it will give the last one because we are not changing the names and I'm unable to grab it from the second screen and there you go I grabbed it finally so this is giving us the last one here so we can pick any now because we have them in a list so if we return it we are going to return our boxes and once we have our boxes we can just simply print one or two out so to, to see if we are getting the correct ones so we can say boxes is equals to utilities and then cv2 dot im show and then we can say test and we can say boxes at number let's say two so if we print that out so let me drag it here so there you go so this is zero one and two so that's why we are getting c so zero one two three four five six seven up till 25 24 so now we have all these images um what do you call in a list so we can use them to let me comment this out so we can use them to find uh, whether they are marked or not so as i discussed earlier to find if they are marked or not 
we are going to count the non-zero pixels of each of these images. So, for example, um, let, just, just to demonstrate, uh, I will write here that uh, we got C here, right? So let's let's find out the, the non-zero pixels of that. So we can write print, we will say cv2 dot non-zero, and then we will say boxes at number two. I think number one was number one was uh, marked. So let's print both of them out. So let's run that. And there you go. So number one, yeah, this is number one that is marked and this is number two that is not marked. So you can see the non-zero pixels, which means the black, uh, uh, the white ones are 10,000 in uh, this region and they are only 2,000 in this region. So we can clearly see that uh, this is the marked uh, bubble or the region. So what we need to do is we need to find out the non-zero pixels for each one of them and once we have them we can put them in an array and we can find the biggest one and we can call it that this is our marked answer. So how can we do that? So for that we need to f first iterate through all our boxes, uh, all our images. So let me comment this out. So right down here, we are going to say for image, image in boxes, we are going to iterate it and we are going to find for each one of them. So we will say that our total, let's say pixels is equals to CV2 dot count non-zero pixels of our given image, image the one we are getting from here. So once we have that, uh, we are going to put it in an array. So what we need is an array of uh, five by five. So wherever we have um, a bubble, we will have a value of how many pixels, non-zero pixels we have. So let's create that. So here we can write my pixel values is equals to numpy dot zeros and here we are going to put how many do we need so we need five by five because we have five questions and we have five multiple answers uh, actually it's better to write it as a variable here so we can write here questions is equals to five and then we have uh, choices is equals to five as well so so first one where did it go so the first one will be our rows so it will be questions and then the columns will be our choices so once we have declared that we are uh, going to put two counters and whenever we have reached uh, five we are going to uh, go down one row and we are going to save it in the coming row. So I think it's better to visualize it. So I will just write it down and then you can see for yourself how that works. So we are going to write count for columns and then count for rows is equals to zero. And uh, then we are going to save our values in my pixel value is equals to uh, count for rows and then not equals to count for rows and count for column equals to our current value so total to what is happening total pixels okay so once we have that we, now we need to iterate so for um, for columns we are going to iterate count C is equals to plus equals one so every time it will iterate one and whenever we reach the value five we are going to go down and 
iterate again so we will say that if uh, count c is equals to the number of choices so choices which will be five in our case and then we have to uh, increase the row count so count row plus equals one and we also need to put count of column back to zero so that it can iterate again so this should run fine hopefully um, to see if it runs fine we can just print out our my pixel values at the end are we printing anything else no okay so that should work fine there you go so now we have um, we have a uh, matrix of five by five and for each one of them we are getting how many pixel non zero pixel values uh, each area or each bubble has so the first one is 4000 then 10,000 2000 2000 and 3000 in the next one 2000 2000 10,000 2000 and 2000 so it's very clear that this is 10,000 here 10,000 here we have 9,000 here um, 6,000 here and 6,000 here so we can easily see that our maximum values are where we have our marks so this works well but uh, the next thing we are going to do we are just going to convert this into zeros and ones so it's a little bit easier to see and it will be easier to match with our uh, final uh, grading so what we will do is uh, we will find out where this uh, maximum point is and we will save the index of this so for example for the first one it will be 0 1 the second one will be 0 1 2 so it will be 2 then it will be 0 then 0 and then 4 so let's do that so we should comment this somehow um, let's write here uh, what are we doing here we are getting the the pixel values uh, getting pixel values of each let's say non-zero pixel values non-zero pixel values of each uh, box so once we have that now we will uh, iterate through our matrix and then wherever we find the maximum we are going to find the index of it so we will declare a new list my index is equals to an empty list and we will say for x in range of zero to the number of questions we have so we will iterate five times so for each one of them one two three four five we will find the maximum and we will save the index of it so the first one will be one so hopefully that will work out well uh, so here we are going to write our array is equals to my pixel value at point x okay so then we are going to compare this uh, so this will give us let me just print it out so if you, you can see what I mean by that so let me write it here okay so let's run that so we are getting each one of these rows one by one so once we have that one row we can use to find the maximum value that's why we are doing this so let's move on so let's let's write here so my index uh, value is equals to numpy dot where so we are using the where function which will help us find in this matrix or in this array where is the uh, maximum value so we will say that we need the index numpy dot argument of max not argument sorry a max 
and then we are going to find our uh, in our array so if we write that so let's print that out and see what happens print my index value so let's read on that okay so it is an array so we have to write zero here yeah so there you go so um, as you can see the the maximum one in the first one is at number one then we have at number two so this is zero one two and then we have at zero then again we have at zero and then we have at four so zero one two three and four so the four is the maximum one so now we are just going to save it in a list so that it is uh, easier to compare so we are going to write here uh, should we keep it i'll just keep it here and then we are going to write here my index value uh, no sorry my index dot append because we are creating in that list my index value and we want to save our current value so if we print that out print um, what do you call my index so let me remove this and anything else no so let's run that and there we have a nice um, what do you call list of uh, our index where we have uh, found the markings so next we are going to compare this with our original answers so we need to write down our answers first so let's go up and here we are going to write ants is equals to so we will define what is our original answer so for this image we are going to say that let's say this is the correct answer so all of them are correct or should we put one wrong let's put one wrong so we will put um this is one two zero zero four so let's put uh one two zero one four so that will give us one wrong so in the beginning you have to define what is the actual answer and now what we can do is to grade it we can simply compare these two matrices and we can find the final score so we are going to define here we should comment this here finding index values values of the markings so next let's just uh, okay let's just keep this here and then we are going to do here grading so for grading we are going to create a new list in which we will define how many of these are correct and how many of these are wrong so we will write grading is equals to a new list and then uh, we are going to iterate and compare so for x in range of um, zero to our questions so how many questions we have so what we are going to do we are going to say that if our answer at uh, x is equals to my index the markings at x then we are going to append our grading as one grading dot append as one so what this will do is if the answer is correct it will put one if the answer is wrong it will put it as zero so grading dot append and we'll put it as zero so we can print out this grading and we can see what happens and there you go so uh, as we discussed we are putting four correct and one wrong so it gives us a zero here 
and the rest of them are correct. So now what we can do is we can uh, find the final score. Let me remove that as well. And now we can find the final score. So to find the final score, we can say score is equals to now we can sum all the gradings so for example we can sum all of these so in this in this case we will get four and then we can divide it by total number of questions so it will be four divided by five and uh, we'll multiply it by 100 so we will get 80 percent so what we can do is we can use um uh, no we don't need that sum we will use grading once we sum the grading we can divide it by the number of questions and then we can multiply it by 100 let's put a bracket here we can multiply it by 100 so this will be our final grade uh, what's the problem here okay the indentation okay and now we can just print out the score And there you go. So we are getting 80% uh, on our test. So now comes the part where we are going to take all of this information and put it back to our image. So we know how many of these are correct. We know where they are correct, where they are wrong. So we need to put green color in the correct ones. We need to put uh, red in the wrong ones and then we need to put the final score which is 80% in our grading area so let's create a new section here so we will say displaying displaying answers so what we will do is we will uh, because it will require a little bit of code so we are going to put it in a function in the utilities so we will say that it will be our show answers so let's go here sorry definitely uh, show answers and uh, we will need a lot of things here but the first thing we will need is the image that we want to display on and uh, we will need all the the index numbers of where we found the markings so we'll write my index we will also need the gradings and we will also need the answers, the actual answers and the grading we have done. So we will write here grading and we will also need the answers. So, so we will need the width and the height of the box so we can create rectangles uh, in that region. So in order to do that, we will use, uh, let's say, section width is equals to uh, the shape of our image and we will divide it by the number of questions so for example we have image dot shape this is our um, number one is our width and what we will do is we will divide it by the number of questions we have so for example uh, yeah the questions we have to define here so questions so questions we will define here and then choices as well so and this all of this should be integer to for this to work and then we have the uh, section height let's just copy that equals number zero and then we have choices so basically what this is doing is um, it's for example let's say we have uh, 500 
as the size of our width so the the image size here is 500 by 500 so then it will take that size the width as 500 it will check how many questions we have so let's say we have five questions so then it will divide it by five and we'll get 100 so the width of our box will be 100 and the height again will be 100 so we will get um, 100 by 100 uh, as the size of width and height now we know uh, the size of each box so we can create a rectangle or we can create a circle at that exact point uh, wherever we are finding the correct or the wrong answer so for that to work we are going to create a for loop so for x in in range of zero to questions so we will iterate five times in our given situation and for each one of them we need to define where our uh, block should be so let me just um, play so for example this is our uh, grid one which is a uh, uh, box one which is a then B then C so for each one of them where should we place where did we find the what do you call the marking we need to color this area and whether it's right or wrong so if it's right we will mark it green if it's wrong we'll mark it red and we will show where is the right answer so we will iterate this five times and for each one of them first we need to know what is the answer so my answer is equals to my index uh, at our given x so once we have that we need to know the center position uh, of our uh, what do you call the box or the area so we will say cx is equals to my answer now this is let's say answer is 2 let's say so we need to multiply this 2 with the given number of boxes high uh, width so we will say section width and then we will add half of our section width to get to the center section width uh, divided by 2 uh, section height so which is y is equals to um, the x plus the section height uh, multiply by the section height and then we will add to the section height the division of 2 now this uh, it seems uh, a little complicated but it's very simple it's very intuitive um, if you just think about it, oh, we are trying to find the center value of our given box. So we have to multiply the x for the height and we have to multiply the, the answer uh, index to our uh, total width. And to get to the center, we have to divide the total width by 2 and add it. And then we have to divide the total width, the, the total height by 2 and add it. So now all we need to do is we need to color it. So we can we can simply write. Let's create a circle. So we can say cv2 dot circle, and then we will create it on our given image, and we will define our center points as cx and cy, and then we will uh, write down the radius of it. Let's say 50, and then the color. Uh, let's say it is green B and G and then R and then we want it filled CV2 sorry CV2 dot filled so show answers so let me just copy this so that we can write the values for each one of them and displaying here So answers is in the utilis 
so our image will be our which image should we display on so let's display it on the colored uh, warped so let's display it here so we can put it here and then my index um, or should we copy I think we should copy let's copy this um, let's copy it here so my so image results is equals to copy of this and then we will put this here and my index we are already getting from here so my index is this then we have grading we are getting from here we have answer we are getting from here and then the questions and the choices we are already we have already defined so that is pretty much that and we should get a return from here so we are supposed to return that image so return image well, what happened here okay so we will go back and we will save it into our image results and we will copy this and paste it so we are running out of space so let's create a new one and we will put the rest of them as blank and the first one we are going to put as our result what did we forget ah the comma okay that's too big so let's squeeze it down to 0 0.3 and there you go so now we are getting green at every uh, what you call choice that we selected but it's not supposed to be green when it's wrong it's supposed to be red when it's wrong so we need to check if the answer is red uh, is if the answer is correct or not so before we decide the color so we are going to color it but before we color it we need to write here that if our grading so we will check if it's correct or wrong at our x index x is equals to 1 then we are going to change my color for example my color is equals to uh, green so we can write this here as green or else we are going to write my color as red and we can copy my color and we can put it here so we run that and there you go so we have four of them correct so we are getting green and then we have one which is red which is wrong but in the red once it is wrong we also need to define where is the correct one so we will create a new circle so if it is wrong we are going to create a new circle so let's just copy this one so we are going to define okay, let's put this down so we will create this uh, new circle but uh, before we do that we need to find where is the correct answer so we will write here so we will write here the correct answer is equals to our answer at this given index we will get that value and uh, based on that we are going to create our circle 
So in the in the CX, what we need to do is instead of this, we will create our own now. So here we are going to say that uh, our correct answer multiplied by our width for each box plus the half of the width the half of the width of each block this will be our what do you call where is the bracket this is the bracket for that and this is this and then we will have the one two this should not be here okay then here we will have the the height so which will be x multiplied by the section height and we will add the section height divided by two so that we are in the center and the color we will not be using red we will be using green so let's just remove that and put green and there you go so it is displaying us where is the right uh, the correct answer let's just put it small so that it is not confusing why we have two of them so let's put 20 and there you go so it's displaying us where is the correct answer when you are getting the wrong answer so this is good so next we are going to take these uh, markings that we have put of green and red and we will put it back in our original image so we have the final result so in order to do that we don't want to take uh, our current image and put it back so we don't want to take this complete image and put it back on our first image what we want to do is we only want to take these uh, colored parts and the rest of them should be black and then we can overlay it to this image so in order to do that we are going to create a blank image and uh, which will be the same size as our um, what do you call the word colored image and then we will color all uh, the areas where we have uh, the circles with uh, red and green and then we will put it back into our final image now in order to do that we are going to create uh, a new image so we will say image let's say raw drawings is equals to we will say that we want to copy it uh, in terms of zeros like the image warped colored so this will give us uh, a copy of that image and then we want to display all this that we have done on this as well so we will copy this show answers and we will paste it here we'll paste it here and then we can copy this and we can display it here so there you go so now we have a blank image which only has the colored parts shown now we can take this image and we can create the inverse perspective and we can apply it on top of this so how can we do that let's find out so here the first thing we will do is we will create a matrix again so if we go back in our matrix so here we have to do a warp we need two points and then we need matrix one and uh, then we need the warping so let's copy this now the points will be same but they will be opposite what I mean by that is where do we paste it okay we paste it here now the matrix uh, this time around it will be inverse matrix and we will use point 
2 as 1 and point 0.1 as 2. And then we will use inverse matrix here as well. And then we are going to use uh, the raw drawing and we will save it as the raw drawing or let's let's save it as the inverse so image inverse warp inverse warp so that should give us an inverse so let's copy that and see what we get so there you go so now we are getting it uh in the in the correct places uh, with respect to this image all we need to do now is combine them two together to get our final image <laughs> so here we are going to uh, sh combine using the added weight so we will say that let's say image final is equals to cv2 dot added is it added or is it at add weight add weighted and image final image final and we are going to add the image final and the image inverse together so image inverse warp and one one and zero now image final is not declared so we can copy the original image if we go up here so here we can write image final so there we have it and now if we copy the image final and paste it here and there you go so now we are getting the correct um, placement of our circles to just just to see it more clearly we can write cv2 dot i am show uh, final result and then we will write image final so if we run that and there you go so now you can see that we are getting it in the correct places and it's telling us that uh, we have done one mistake and four of them are correct and B is the correct one where you have written A now the last thing we have to do is we have to add the grade here so the grade will be in the same manner that we did our um, what do you call the circles so for the grade again we need to uh, first of all put the text we need to create an image a black image and then we need to put the text on it and then we will do the inverse perspective and add it to our original image so we can say that image raw of grade is equals to numpy dot zeros like our image uh, graded display and then we need to put the text on this so we will write cv2 dot put text so we will define which image which is image uh, what did we write it as raw grade image raw grade and then we will uh, write down what we need to write so we will write a string uh, of our score so let's let's put it as integer so we'll write it as score and then we are going to add uh, something else with it which will be our percentage sign so let's write here percentage and then we need to write down the origin we can pick any random values and see how they turn out 50 by 100 and um, then we need to write down the font the font is cv2.font we'll just pick a random one and then the scale we can put let's say three and then we need to define the color which color 
let's say 0, 255, 255, and then the thickness, let's say 3 again. So because this is not the same size, we have to create a new image. So CV2 new window. So CV2 I am show. The window name is let's say grade. And then we have to write image raw graded. So let's run that. And there you go. So this is our final uh, image that we are getting here so all we need to do now is do the inverse perspective and put this over here so it will come over here like this but with the perspective of course so we can remove this and then we have to do the inverse perspective and uh, this will be pretty much the same as we have done before so we are going to copy it from the previous one here and we'll paste it here and this time around we will write inverse matrix again we will make one as two and two as one and then here we are going to use the grade and then we have the inverse matrix inverse matrix and uh, we can define a new image name here, image inverse, let's say grade display. So once we have that, now we can put that in our original image like we did before. So oh, what happened there? We can write our image over here. So if we run this now, we get an error. Why do we get an error? Ah, okay, so you this should be with 10 heights. Okay, so let's run that. And there you go. So now we are getting it in the correct places and we have the grade as well written inside. It's a little bit shifted, let's shift it little bit forward so the width let's say can be 60 mm, yeah it's it's better okay so now we are getting our grade with the inverse perspective and we are getting all our answers properly where we mark them and at the end uh, we are getting the percentage value so next we can do what we can do is we can add labels to our images so we can see which one is which so if we want to do that what we have to do where is the stacking okay this is the stacking so here we have to put labels and labels we can define here so labels is equals to we have to define for each one of them uh, so we can literally copy this or let's let's just write it down so we can say original and then we have and then we have gray and then we have the blur Then we have canny okay and okay so in the next one we have contours then we have biggest contour then we have the warp then we have the threshold then we have um, result we have the raw 
drawing. Then we have the inverse warp. And at the last we have our final image. So we have final. So if we run that, there you go. So now for each one of them, we have our labels showing us where what is happening. So the last thing we can do is we can add our webcam instead of using the image. And uh, whenever we press the S key, we can save the image, uh, the final result of the image. So in order to do that, we will go up. And here we are going to declare a parameter by the name webcam feed is equals to true in our case. And then we are going to define our uh, webcam parameters. So here we will say that capture is equals to cv2 dot video capture and then we have to define the camera number. So let's write here camera camera number. So the camera number we can put here as one let's say. Uh, it can be zero if you have uh, only one camera. Uh, the default camera it will be zero if you have multiple connected then it depends on um, your camera so next we are going to set the parameter so we can set the brightness of it by using cap dot set uh, i like to play with this parameter because sometimes it gets uh, it gives better results so we can start off with uh, 150 160 something like that and uh, next we are going to create a while loop now here we will say while true uh, we are going to do all of that and then we will say that if the webcam feed is true then you will take uh, you will use the webcam so we have success and then we have the image itself and then we can read it from our object and if that is not the case then we will say else you will use the image from the path now all of this needs to go in the loop mm, yep that should do it and at the end for the webcam uh, we cannot just put wait key zero we have to uh, for for the s key we are going to write if cv2 dot wait key is one and zero x f So if we are getting the S key, then we are going to save this image, cv2.imwrite. And we are going to give it a file name. So let's say uh, final result. And then we are going to write dot jpg and then we are going to say which image we want to save so it will be our image final so that should work and we can add a delay cv2 dot wait key let's say 300 mm, yeah that's pretty much it but there's something else let me just play it and you will see what that is so if we run this now, we are getting an error that we are unable to find the biggest contour or we are not getting the corner points or something like that. Now this can happen if you are not getting rectangles and during a webcam feed, there will be lots of time when you are not getting the proper uh, rectangles that you require or the image is not there. So to counter any of these issues, 
what we will do is we will ask it to try. If it doesn't work, then forget it and keep moving. So before you start finding any contours, we are going to say try doing this. If it doesn't happen, just keep moving forward. So here, um, I think we should do it till here. Okay. So if it if it doesn't happen, then we can put accept. And but we need to display something, so we can just copy this, and we can we can just put the blank images everywhere. There we go. So if we run that now, so here we are getting all the blank images and we have the final result. So let me put the image uh, or let me put the MCQ paper. So let's remove the labels and run it again. So we will put it, as, and we wanna make it a little bit bigger to see. So there you go. So we are getting our images and we are getting the final result so if i put an mcq paper in front there we go it should give us the correct values so now we can see here it's detecting the contours properly then it's detecting the corner points properly the biggest one and the second biggest one and then we are getting the word perspective and even the threshold we are getting the correct ones that we have marked and it is circling the correct ones and using that information it's putting it back into the final image and uh, if we press s it should save so if we stop it and go back and there you go this is your final result and it has saved this image so let me show you a few more results so here we have this where did it go? So let me change that. Here we can see it's only 20%. The answers are correct. And I have another one. And here you can see the answers are only 80% correct. So let us put, uh, and, and you can see here that here A is actually, uh, it was marked before and then it was rubbed. So it's, it still did not detect that, which is good. So this is it for today's tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you would like to see something special or something very particular, you can comment down below and don't forget to share. And I will see you in the next video.